Oh, wella, wella, welcome back. Let's do it. So we are going to take a look at the Middle Ages today. As you can see, ooh, it's, that's a chilly one. And on slide two, we're going to look at this question. How does society influence identity and experience? So we're going to go over here to the highlighter. We're going to click on our little mustard yellow, and we're going to find some words that you think connect with society, identity, and or experience. So I'm going to take a moment and we'll look at some together. First, look at people right here at the center. All about people. The experience of people, people's identity, and society being a group of people, right? Here's a different group of people, Romans. Here's a group of people, peasants. What are some of the things that they like to do? And they like to play. So maybe it's the experience of play for peasants, Roman, and people. All right, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to switch over to orange here. And I'd like you to take a moment and highlight one to two words that you feel connect with that question. How does society influence identity and experience? Take the time to do that now. Ooh, I bet you did a good job. So Take a look at this little prompt. We're not going to spend too much time on it, but this prompt could guide a TDA in the future. Structure is how an author builds ideas on the page and in the mind of the reader. How does the structure and language of the text help the author communicate their main ideas? Use the evidence from the text to support your answer. Could you grab these two red dots and take a moment to find the two most important words in that prompt? Nice work. So we're going to read the text for the first time and annotate along the way. Please grab the question mark and put it in the places where I'm putting it. So introduction to the Middle Ages, and we have our text features and text structures there. We are actually going to skip a little bit past that today. We're just going to put it by text features and text structures. Know that there's some uh, similarities and differences there. A feature is like a title and a heading, whereas a structure is like cause and effect, how you organize the thinking in it. Um, this is set up. Uh, the main idea in details. So I'm going to put that right next to main idea in details. I'm going to leave it there for now. Slide six, introduction to the Middle Ages. History is the record of past events and times. The three general historic areas include ancient history, the Middle Ages, and modern history. What distinguishes the areas and what are the characteristics of each? Let's take a look. Ancient history. So we've got a text feature there. Ancient history is a study of cultural and political events from the beginning of human history until the early Middle Ages. Something tells me that a lot of the writing here will be organized with main idea and then details. Oftentimes that main idea is in something called the topic sentence. It's in the topic sentence. So we're gonna take our, our something that seems important light bulb and we're gonna put that at the topic sentence of each page. Okay. Get the question mark out of the way as well. Ancient history is a study of cultural and political events from the beginning of human history until the early Middle Ages. Ancient history begins with the earliest writings, the Sumerian cuneiforms from 5,000 to 5,500 years ago. This, according to historians, is the beginning of recorded history. This does not mean that nothing happened prior to 3000 BC, the era called prehistory. This era is written about by anthropologists who are scientists who study the origin, behavior, and development of humans. Because there are no written records, they accomplish their research through the study of bones and artifacts left by early people. There's my topic sentence. The ancient period saw the rise of many civilizations whose influence is still perceptible today. The beginnings of nations, empires, most religions practiced today, organized agriculture, trade, and organized warfare are but a few of these influences. To give you a frame of reference, here are some events that occurred in the ancient world. The pyramids were built in Egypt to honor the citizens' dead pharaohs or leaders. Jesus Christ was born and the Christian religion was founded the books of the Bible were written. The Tao Te Ching was written in China. It described the and promoted the importance of a modest and balanced life. Socrates and Plato, 
great Greek philosophers wrote about how all people should be accountable for their actions. Slide 10. Islam became the religion of many. The Arabic word Islam means submission in peace. In practice, it is understood to mean submission in peace to the will of God Almighty, Allah, Allah. The Roman Empire spread throughout Europe. The strategy that led to the formation of this empire was to conquer other lands and create colonies there. This expansion brought much wealth to the Roman state and positioned Rome as the imperial city. Rome became a very cosmopolitan capital city. High living and wealth measured a person's importance and success. The Roman Empire had an autocratic form of government. In other words, the emperor had unlimited power. Although the ending date of ancient history is largely arbitrary, most Western scholars use the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 as the traditional ending. This is when a German named Odacher removed the last ruling emperor from Rome. There are many different theories as to why the Roman Empire collapsed. Declining morals, public corruption, unemployment, inflation, urban decay, and increased military spending are few of the theories cited. The Middle Ages or the Medieval Years. Here is where we're going to stop and start thinking about this word medieval. Take a moment and read this page and you can put your question next to um, any clues that give you an idea of what medieval years might be. Go ahead and take the time to do that now. Good job. Now that you've had a chance to, to rock and roll in your vocabulary journals, let's finish up the Middle Ages to modern history, and then we'll, we'll organize ourselves uh, into groups and, and drill down on some of the different um, societies within the larger medieval society. So the Middle Ages or medieval time is generally believed to have started with the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 and to have lasted about a thousand years until about 1450. The beginning of the Middle Ages is called the Dark Ages because the great civilizations of Roman Greece had been conquered. Life was very hard in the Middle Ages. Very few people could read or write. Their lack of knowledge often led to superstitious beliefs. The people thought that fate ruled their existence. Therefore, there was little hope for improvement of their condition. During the years of the Roman Empire, the poor people were protected by the soldiers of the emperor. When the empire fell, there were no laws to protect them. So they turned to the lords to keep the peace and to act on their behalf. This willingness to be ruled by lords led to the beginnings of feudalism. Some peasants were free, but most became serfs to a lord. This meant they were bound to the lord's land and paid very high rent to the lord. Oh, there's going to be our topic sentence again. Oh, forgot that on that last slide. Whoops. The only hope that most people have was their belief that the next life in heaven would be better than life on earth. The Crusades were launched to bring Jerusalem under Christian control because the Muslims had denied pilgrims access to the city. The experiences of the traveling crusaders opened up new worlds and ideas to the medieval people. Here's another topic sentence down here. Prior to the Middle Ages, many groups of people led invasions in European lands. They included the Huns from Central Asia, the barbarian tribes from Scotland, and the Germanic tribes, which included the Vandals, Lombards, Goths, and Franks. During the Middle Ages, there were barbarian invasions, which included the Viking raids and the raids of the Mongols who controlled most of Russia and Eastern Europe. Almost half of the people in Western Europe died from the bubonic plague. This disease, which killed 35 million Asians, was brought to Europe by ships coming back from China. Rats traveled on the ships. Fleas living on the blood of these infected rats transferred the disease to people. Lymph nodes swelled and burst, and the skin turned a dark gray color. Medicinal care and cleanliness were lacking. Superstition ruled. It should be noted that other parts of the world were thriving in this era. North Africa, the Middle East, China, India, and other parts of the world were experiencing great positive civilizational changes. The Renaissance in about 1450. 
Renaissance is a French word that means rebirth. This rebirth began when European scholars became more aware of and interested in the world around them. The art became more true to life. People began to learn about new lands, customs, and beliefs. About 1450, European scholars became more interested in studying the world around them. Their art became more true to life. They began to explore new lands. The new age in Europe was eventually called the Renaissance. Renaissance is a French word that means rebirth. Historians consider the re Renaissance to be the beginning of modern history. So much happened in the world since 1450. One example is the invention of the printing press, a huge step for it provided education to the masses. We can look at religious reforms from dependence upon Catholicism to the rise of Protestantism and also the religion in the age of reason. We can look at politics throughout the world. The American and French revolutions made drastic changes in the way the world was viewed. The scientific revolution, the enlightenment, and the industrial revolution all changed the world. The 19th century brought about the concepts of nationalism, the civil war in America, the feminism movement, the growth of socialism and Marxism in the works of Darwin, Freud, and Einstein. Two world wars occurred as well, in the 20th century that is, as well as many other conflicts throughout the world. Today we're seeing the great impact of technology. How was that? Two paragraphs to summarize about 550 years of history. Whoa. So here we have the question is more of like a teaser, right? This two paragraphs at 550 years. The whole story will have to be told at a different time and in a different place. In this study, we're going to spend time learning about the Middle Ages, what happened and how people were affected. Enjoy the trip. Okay. So we're going to stop there for now.